project, I did the Uranium Legacy in Church Rock, New Mexico. So I want to start off with a definition of localism in terms of how we see it. So I said localism isn't just about those living in your neighborhood. Those who suffer in our country should be a concern and those who suffer in our state should be even more of a concern. Even if the community in jeopardy isn't somewhere we call home, it is our responsibility to look out for them and support them. The Church Rock Reservation is full of kind and hospitable people who suffered silently for something that they never asked for. The uranium mining on their land was never a matter of choice. They had no, they had to give in to the government and now they live with the consequences of that industry without anyone to help them. After this presentation, I hope to have everyone inspired enough to support Church Rock. I'll provide a phone number that can help you find help you to find what you can do to help at the end of the slideshow because their fight is far from over. So to start off the uranium legacy, which is a nationwide problem, uh, the United States consists of 160,000 abandoned uranium mining sites, which are very in radioactivity, but are all equally dangerous in their own right. Um, the sites are highly radioactive and they do pose a threat to the environment and the people around them, especially on reservations where they were used very recently. Uh, the EPA and NRC have been working on cleaning up sites, but the prog progress has been very slow. Um, we're seeing maybe a quarter of these being cleaned up in the next 20 years, but that's not nearly enough. And the demographic that's receiving the cleanup are entire, almost entirely white communities while indigenous communities like Church Rock are being left out. So background on Church Rock, um, the city consists of just about 1,200 people. Uh, the town is inhabited by members of the Navajo Nation. Um, the town has 20 inactive uranium mines and mills with a few uranium burial sites located around the reservation. And the reservation is plagued by life-threatening levels of radiation to this day. So. Their area right now is not fit for human life, but they won't leave their land because it's historically theirs and they shouldn't have to. So the history of Church Rock in terms of the uranium industry. Uh, so while the US was expanding their nuclear weapons program, they were on the hunt for domestic uranium more than ever. And um, so when they found out that a lot, of the, a lot of the uranium was found on indigenous land, they struck a deal with the Navajo Nation and asked them to come and mine for it. And they, the Navajo Nation negotiated on the terms that the people on the reservation would get the employment opportunities that they wanted, which the NRC agreed was fair. But in the meantime, they knew that they were subjecting people who had no idea what they were dealing with to something that would affect them for generations. So they hired teenagers and adults to work in the mines and it paid really well, but they did not know what the dangers were of being in those mines. So while they were down there for decades, they mined it with no protective equipment and they drank water from the ground while they worked 12 plus hour days in the mines. So the result of this is, so once the uranium craze had died down, the mines started to slowly be closed up because they didn't need the uranium anymore. And um, as the workers started to get older, they started to develop multiple types of different cancers. And at that point, the companies pulled out and the government decided to kind of stop the program on the indigenous land before they could be kind of traced back to. And um, yeah, so the sites are still actively irradiated and began causing health problems to all of those living on the reservation. So the companies left at just the right time to not claim responsibility for what they did. But these people, they, they know exactly what happened. It's pretty clear. They worked in the mines. Now they have all these varying types of cancers and now they can't even live on the land that they're entitled to own. So they have some demands from the NRC and the EPA. Um, they demanded that the NRC intervened and cleaned up the radioactive mess they had made. And the NRC, quote unquote, heard them out uh, off of their reservation and conference halls and stuff like that where they could send a representative but nothing ever came of it. So over the last 50 years, they've been demanding to be heard, especially their main demand was to be heard on their land so they could see how they lived. And on April 30th, they were actually listened to for the first time and there was an agreement that they would come and have a negotiation on Navajo land. So um, the meeting itself, I was fortunate enough to be invited to the meeting after going on a tour of the reservation. 
I had kind of stumbled into it because I planned to meet with the leader of their chapter house. And in the middle of our meeting, he had to answer a phone call and he had to go and set up the site before the NRC had come in. So I came with him. And next thing I knew, I was invited to the meeting and I was encouraged to be a part of it. So during the meeting, the residents of the reservation got to voice their concerns and tell them of the reality of the situation. And that was that the people were dying and they were actively dying just living on this land. So the NRC, as far as they knew, since the Biden administration had just appointed a new head of the board, um, he seemed very compassionate about the situation. I don't know if he was sincere, but it did seem like he truly cared about the issue. But watching them all have the ability to voice their concerns was really powerful. And I was, it was pretty moving to watch, but um, it was also really sad because we had a lot of people get up in front of the crowd and talk about how their family had died, who they lost, how they were fighting cancer. Some members of the Navajo Nation weren't even able to make it to the meeting. One person I had met, his name was Tony. Um, he wasn't even able to make it to the meeting because he had a scheduled surgery for uh, colon cancer that he contracted after working in the mines for 15 years. So in the next slide, I'm going to include a video of a short clip of the meeting so that you can get an idea for kind of what it looked like and what the general style of it was. So here. is very personal for all of us. Thank you. So that was a member of their community and he is actually fighting two different types of cancers right now. I believe he said he had lung cancer and he had pancreatic cancer. And he joined the army after working in the mines and had to get medically discharged because he had brain cancer. So this is his third different type of cancer, all from working in the mines. And he's been a advocate for the removal of uranium waste or nuclear waste from the reservation for many years now. And my next slide. So the outcome of this meeting, the NRC has a new plan to move the waste to a repository, but the repository is still on their land. It's just gonna be moved to one spot. So instead of ridding them of life-threatening levels of radioactivity, they're just going to move it to one spot. And that spot is going to be insanely radioactive. Anyone who lives in the area will need to evict or else it will be a problem for them. They'll probably die. So their solution is to move it to one place, not to get rid of it. So this event, although it was the first time that the NRC had ever visited this reservation, and as far as they were concerned, had ever visited Navajo land in this way. Um, it seemed like the community members were afraid that this meeting may not have enacted the change they had hoped for. So I included a phone number here. It's to the Church Rock Chapter House. And this is who I initially contacted to get these meetings. And when I talked to them, they were also very open to ways that I could help them. And since I was working on a project, that was what they said that I could contribute, but anybody could call and ask just how you could contribute to their, their cause. Uh, I want to have a special thank you to Esther, Yazzie Lewis, and Larry King. They allowed me to be a part of this event. They did not have to. I, I had no reason to be there other than an invite from them. Uh, they were very welcoming and they invited me. They involved me in every step of the process. I got to help them set up. I helped them take down. I interviewed before and after and during. Uh, it was just a great experience and I was really lucky to be a part of it. And I wish them the best moving forward and I plan on being involved moving forward. They invited me to an event over the summer for a memorial for the people who they had lost. So I'm looking to go to that and I look forward to working with them in the future. They're all very nice people. <laughs> 